Hello everyone. I hope you're having a fabulous day. Look what is blooming now. This is one of my dendrobiums. I had no idea what this one was going to be like when it bloomed and it's my favorite color combination. It's um, green with purple. Oh wow. Every time I look at this one, I'm almost speechless. I am so happy with these with this beautiful dendrobium. It is just beautiful. Uh, let me show you what her name is because I have the name of this one. It's Dendrobium Burana Jade Fantasy number nine. And oh my goodness, I think that the wait was worth it this time. I'm very happy with this spike of beautiful Dendrobium blooms. I'm going to have eight blooms on this spike. So I promised everyone a video when this one started to bloom. I also wanted to show you I have two blooms now on this beautiful little miniature dendrobium. I have decided to call this one April's Hope after my oldest niece. She is actually the one that I started making orchid videos for when she started growing orchids. So uh, this was my first dendrobium to bloom. So I'm going to name it April's Hope after my niece. And here is my beautiful Vanda Sensei Blue. It is um, just, the blooms on this are huge. They just keep getting bigger and bigger. And the spike of flowers just gets more and more beautiful. So you know that when I have a Vanda spike, I'm going to share these blooms with you all as much as I can because Vanda spikes are just really, really special. Um, over here on my Picara Blue, um, this spike is coming along very nicely. So I love it when this one blooms. I love it when any of my orchids bloom. So, um, but when I have a Vanda spike, that's just really, really exciting. And I thought I would go through today and show you which ones of my fowls are spiking. This is Star. And look, she has a spike. I am so happy. This is my little miniature intensity. And at the very bottom here, you will notice a spike starting right there. So my miniatures are doing really, really well in this western facing window here. And this is a spike that is just starting on my Baldwin's Kaleidoscope. You know, I have two of them. This is the one that I have in moss. That one's in spike. Here's my beautiful Fowl Golden number five. I have her out here. Um, I brought her in from the kitchen because it's such a nice, pretty, warm, sunny day. And I did fertilize her this morning. So I wanted her to come back here and get some sunlight and some warmer temperatures. And I'm very excited. Uh, this is my white water culture fowl. And um, this is the first spike that I've ever had on this one. Um, it was in bloom. It was coming out of bloom when I bought her this time last year. So I'm going to have a beautiful spike of white fowl blooms. Love white fowls. And here is a close up of a secondary spike on my fowl cool breeze. My huge white fowl that I've had for so long. I think I've had it nine or 10 years. Um, it started spiking. And as you remember, I put this one in moss. It is a huge, huge plant. The roots on this thing are just strong and healthy. I love this plant. It's just a really, really nice plant. Um, over here is um, Fowl Marianne. And right here, let me zoom in here. Right here you can see she's starting She's starting a secondary spike right here. You can see that now, yes. So I'm getting spikes and secondary spikes. This is the time of the year, the middle of October, November, 1st of December. That is when your fowls really start to shine. Here, let me come back over here. <laughs> Get another shot of my dendrobium bloom. I love saying that. I have dendrobium blooms. They were worth the wait. They're beautiful. 
So it is November 15th, and I want you to look at the temperatures that we have today. It's a beautiful sunny day. It is 74 degrees back here in my sunroom. It is 59, and the temperature is going to go up this afternoon even more. So what I did this morning um, is I did my fertilizing today. This is a great day to fertilize. Whenever I have a day like this in the fall, I make that my fertilizing day. And today I used my regular fertilizer that I've been using for so long. Um, I decided that the temperatures were really good to use this fertilizer. And some people have been asking me how many milliliters is half a teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon. I thought I would just give you this in both standard and in metric today. So you can see um, I'm mixing this in one gallon or 3.78 liters of 6.2 pH water. What I'm doing is my Vandas get a half a teaspoon. That's two and a half milliliters per gallon of water. Um, my fowls and my dendrobiums are getting, and my catalea, they're getting a quarter of a teaspoon this time of the year. What I've done is I have just, um, I've pretty much halved the dose of my summer um, fertilizer routine. And that's what they're getting right now. Um, probably next month when we get colder temperatures, I'm going to reduce them further. But with this warm weather that we're having right now, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of it and, um, and use this amount. And I'll show you why I want to use that amount with my Vandas especially. Uh, they are growing. They have new, they, this one has a new leaf here. This one has a new leaf, of course. This is my beautiful Mother's Day Vanda with the absolutely beautiful roots. These roots just, they just still amaze me. Of course, this one has a spike of flowers. And this one is getting a new leaf. So see all this active growth. Um, I want to use the fertilizer to help these new growths do their very, very best. And as you see, uh, this fell has a leaf starting. And of course, this one is the one that just has a spike just starting. And over here, see all of mine have these new leaves starting. Um, plus, most of them do have the secondary spikes or the primary spikes starting. So I, I want to make sure that I fertilize those so that they'll get really good growth. And here are my new Catalea roots. They are just growing. It seems like I can watch them grow every single day. Um, it's doing just fantastically well. And um, the flower sheaths are starting to just, um, they're starting to grow as well. You see that one in the center there? It's beautiful. And also for the ones, for the fowls that are in water culture, um, I'm giving them the same amount as I do the ones in the moss or in the bark. I give them that quarter teaspoon as well, and they're doing very, very well. The only time I don't like to fertilize um, my fowls is when the buds are setting on the spikes. That's about the only time that I, that I don't fertilize them. And with my dendrobiums, I'm only um, fertilizing them a few times a month now. I was fertilizing them about every week, but now about every other week, I think is going to be a really good regimen for them. By now, all of my dendrobiums have their terminal leaf on the canes. Uh, this is the last cane that this one grew this year. And as you see, I've got a really small little leaf right here. That means that it has grown all it's going to until probably spring when new canes start. So um, that's the reason why I'm pulling back on my fertilizer. Uh, the plant just does not need as much because it's not in active growth. But it does need some fertilizer just to help keep the plant strong. So 
So I think I've shown you all all of the new spikes, all of the new flowers that I have. This is a great time of year when you're growing orchids because you have blooms to show for all that work that you did in the summer. So you all be highly favored, deeply loved, and greatly blessed, and we'll talk to you all next time.